Good morning, everyone. Uh, I apologize, uh, but I have to be gone uh, today for uh, a meeting, so I couldn't attend class. However, I wanted to continue uh, with the lecture uh, on a very important topic. <coughs> right now in Computer Science 479, we have our class of all languages. And this class of all languages includes a very important set called the set of regular languages. And these are accepted by both DFAs and NFAs. Now, what this means is that in order to prove a language is regular, that it belongs in this set, we must build either a DFA or an NFA that accepts it. It's what defines regularity in this context of languages. So written and sort of implied by it is that this idea that whether or not we build a DFA or an NFA, it doesn't matter. That means we're asking ourselves a very important question. Are DFAs and NFAs, in fact, equivalent? The point of today's lecture is to say yes, and we can actually prove it. Now, our proof approaches for this are going to be twofold and one for each direction. First, we're going to prove that for every DFA, there is a, an equivalent NFA. Then we're going to show that for every, every NFA, there is an equivalent DFA. Once we prove these two, we'll know that the two are equivalent. So the first one, let's talk about it. And, and this one's gonna be a proof by definition. We're going to show that every DFA, in fact, is already an NFA. You can call it a proof by construction if you would like, but really it's a proof by definition. When I take a relatively simple DFA, something like this, Everyone recognizes this S starts with A. If I were to ask you whether this was a deterministic finite automaton or a non-deterministic finite automaton, most of you would say that this is definitely a deterministic finite automaton, and that is true. However, it is also by definition a non-deterministic finite automaton. Let me show this to you. A DFA, we'll call this M, is part of, is a, a five tuple. One, two, three, four, five. The first part is a set of states, which we know we have. We have Q0, Q1, and I'm sorry, Q2 for some reason, and the dead state. It's a set of three. We have our alphabet, this is A's and B's. The more important part right here is that transition function. Four, we have Q sub naught. And then we have a final state, which is Q sub two. What's most important is this transition function right here. I can't draw it today. Uh, the transition function is a cross where for every state, Q naught, Q sub two, and the dead state. And for every letter, in our alphabet, it goes to a single state. Q sub zero given A goes to Q sub two. Q sub zero given B goes to the dead state. Q sub two given A goes to Q sub two. Q sub two given B goes to Q sub two. In the dead state, the same thing. Things just loop back to itself. This is a DFA. This transition function says that for each state and each letter of the alphabet, we go to a single state, the next state. Now, when we look at the definition of an NFA, all of this stuff stays exactly the same. The only thing that changes is we go for every state and every letter of the alphabet we go to a different set. 
So how can we show that for every DFA there is an equivalent NFA? We take the transition function and we add curly braces on either side. Done. We now have for every state and every letter we have a set of states. That's one way to say and prove by construction if we wanted to that this means that every DFA has an equivalent NFA. However, I prefer to say it simply this. This machine right here is deterministic. At no point in the definition of a non-deterministic finite automaton does it say that it must include non-determinism. So this is an NFA that simply does not exploit non-determinism. It's an NFA that didn't bother to have any N non-determinism. It is deterministic, but it is also, it's almost like deterministic is more restrictive. So this just doesn't use the more or the less restrictive mechanisms of an NFA. It's not deterministic. I'm sorry, it is deterministic, but that does not mean that it isn't also a non-determinism. For, uh, for either one of those, whichever way you want to say, just by the defining point of an NFA, or if you want to look at it by, all we do is put squiggly marks on the end. This shows that yes, for every deterministic finite automaton, there's an equivalent non-deterministic finite automaton. By definition, DFAs are already NFAs that don't use non-determinism. If you don't believe it, go to the transition function and make each state simply a set of one state. And that shows that DFAs can produce an equivalent NFA. Step one, done. Step two is significantly harder. Step two is for every NFA, there's an equivalent DFA. For every non-deterministic automaton, there's a deterministic uh, finite automaton. This is incredibly different, all right? What this is essentially saying is for the less restrictive form, can we build the more restrictive form? And this asks us an important question. What does non-determinism give us? One of my favorite test questions is, what can NFAs do that DFAs can't? The answer is absolutely nothing. However, they can be more expressive. So it's, it, it, they can be easier to write as well. But we need to show that for every NFA, there's an equivalent DFA. So right here, I have an example written on the board with a slightly easier naming scheme for the states. And I want to know if we can show that there's a, 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 an equivalent DFA that we can produce by some method or construction. Now, I'm not going to write the entire steps of the construction. There's two homework assignment problems that are going to cover this. Uh, but we're going to follow the basics. We're going to use our logic instead of the construction as it's written in the book. First off, let's check this automaton. Let's see if it's non-determinism. I see two places where non-determinism exists in this NFA. First is from state three to state one. You can see that there's an empty string transition. From state two to state three, there's a B, but also there's a B that loops onto itself with state two. So here's how I want to do this. Y'all remember this, this idea that we had, uh, okay, for state one, to evaluate it, we would see where we would go to if state one were given an A, and it would go to state one. I'm sorry, to state two. And then where to state two go, if we got a B, and it would go to state two or to state three. This is how we were evaluating NFAs in the past through the NFA, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I need to make a final state, so we'll make this one a final state. So we have seen this concept I want to take this concept a little bit further, and I want to look at this in a, in a new way. Let's create an equivalent NFA. In step one, we're going to 
to rewrite our initial state. Now this is more complicated in the book because sometimes if there's like an empty string transition outside of the initial state, it can be complicated. But let's just create an initial state, state one, same as the NFA. And from here, I wanna think about where each letter goes. If I go to A, I'm sorry, if I have an A, I go to two and only two. I'm at one, I get A, I go to two, only two. So I introduce a new state for state two and I diagram it. For, for one, if I get a B, there's only one place I can go and that is to state three. However, if we were going to look at the evaluation of this, like we were doing in class just on Monday, if I am at state one and I get a B, I can go to state three, or I can go to state three and take an empty string transition, and I can also go back to one. So for this, this transition, this, this arrow that we put into our automaton, it says from state one, just given a B, where can we end up? Well, this means that we can go to either states one or three. And we put that in the diagram. And this is how we're going to construct all of our DFA. So think about the naming of this. If I'm at state one in my NFA and I get a B, I can go to states one or three in my NFA. My DFA will actually model this by creating a state that shows it could have gone to either one of these two states. As soon as I get here, I put a green check mark. You're gonna get very used to me putting green check marks inside of states. Let's continue to go through here and let's say state two. At state two in our NFA, if we get an A, where can we go? There's only one choice. Two will loop back to itself inside of our original NFA. But if two gets a B, it can go to itself. In fact, let's map this, because we, we have the tool to kind of put this on paper. If we are in state two and we get a B, we can loop back to itself. We can go over to three. But when we get to three, there's this empty string transition back to one. So if I get a B, which states can I go to? I can go to either one, two, or three whenever I get a B. This state is done. So I'm gonna put a little green check box. You'll notice that we're building the states down here. This is just, we don't touch that. We started with our initial state and we're just building out. Okay, for one, we had A and a B. For two, we had an A and a B. Next, we're gonna go for one, three, and we're gonna have an A and a B. These things get a little bit more complicated. So we have to show our work over here on the side. And we say for states one and states, state three, if we are building for one, three, and we want to know where we go with an A, if I'm at one and I have an A, I only go to two. If I'm at three and get an A, we have to be careful here. Do we go to, we, we can't, we're, we're talking about what happens when we get the A. So if we went, if we're at one, I'm sorry, three. If we took the empty string and took the A, that's not what we're asking. For the arrows out, they go A. So there's nothing here. This is reject. So from the strings, from the states one and three, if I get an A, I only go to state two. Now, when I look at my DFA that I'm creating here, from one and three, when we get an A, we go to state two. This is actually already modeled in our DFA. It's right above it here. 
our A goes to state two. The next question we have, for one three, what happens when we get a B? Well, in state one, if I get a B, I can go to three, or with that empty string, I can also go to one. From state three, I get a B. I don't go anywhere. It goes nowhere. So a state that goes to one, three, goes to three, one, when I have a B. However, yet again, this models a state where we could have been in our NFA, we could have been in states one or three. This represents a state where we could have been in three or one. These two are the same thing. So when I go from one, three to three, one, what I'm really doing is I'm going back to itself with B. And finally, to finish our, we, we have to kind of show our work here. All right. For states one, two, and three, this models when our NFA, we could have been at states one, two, or three. If we're given an A and we're at one, we go just to state two. If we're at state two and we get an A, we can just go to state two. And if we're at three and we get an A, we go nowhere. These are two twos here, right? That doesn't make any sense. So what we do is when we have one, two, three as our state and we have an A, the only possible state that we could have gone to is state two. And finally, for one, two, and three, what happens when we get a B? We're at one, we get a B, we can go to three, or we can go to one. State two, we get a B, we can go to two, or we can go to three. And three, it goes nowhere. However, where do we end up? We end up at state three, one, two, one, two, three. We've already said that this is going to be the same, B. And now we have all of our green check boxes. The last step we need to create an equivalent DFA is that every path that would have ended up, that could have ended up in a final state should also be a final state in our DFA. So in this part, every state that includes state three gets a nice little double circle to be an accepting state. This construction, an example here, but the steps that we went through, show that for any NFA, we can simply model the non-determinism inside of a DFA. One of these things is more complicated the other than the other. This one has one more state, and I would argue is significantly less expressive than the NFA we started with. However, these Two automaton are equivalent. This one just shows where the non-determinism could have ended up. This is deterministic. The steps we followed prove that for any NFA, we can create an equivalent DFA. The entire steps for the proof by construction are given in your textbook. They're a little overcomplicated for here and you may need it for your homework. But however, I think this more clearly shows exactly what we're doing. Non-determinism, the B and the B, the empty string. We show the effects that this would have on a deterministic machine. Since we showed that given any NFA, we can produce an equivalent DFA, and for any DFA, we can produce a, an equivalent NFA, we have shown that these two machines are in fact equivalent. These two relatively straightforward proofs, nothing overly dramatic. I know the first one, that all DFAs are just NFAs that don't use non-determinism, is probably pretty gross, 
it probably seems wrong, but I promise that it's right. If you really need to prove it to yourself, think about the original definition where I simply changed the transition function to have all of them result in a set of just one state. It's adding curly braces and you change it. Therefore, it's kind of a proof by definition. And the second one, the proof by construction. We just showed an example of that construction, but they all tend to be that simple. With these two, we show that non-determinism does not increase the power. It does not increase what a machine can do. It can. And this does extend all the way to general computing. It can be more efficient. It can be smaller. It can do all of that, but non-determinism doesn't allow us to do anything in particular. Now, you've probably heard what can quantum computing do. Well, it can speed up some algorithms. Having this, this non-determinism can help speed that up. There's some very real questions where we don't rely on things to be computably, like absolutely we can't compute this. However, we do count on some things being extremely hard to do. An example of this would be a public key, private key encryption scheme that uses the factoring of large numbers as a way to make sure that people can't break encryption. We are counting on the fact that this factoring is very, very hard and that it would take too long to accomplish. Okay, <laughs> well, if we have a non-deterministic algorithm, we can break public key, private key encryption schemes. It just takes a couple of million years to do it in a supercomputer. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of electricity, you know, millions of dollars of electricity, and, and of course the amount of carbon that you would produce for the atmosphere, we're pretty safe. However, if it can be done quickly, we, we already know how to factor the hard numbers, it's just by trial and error, it takes too long. If there's a non-deterministic method or even frankly a smart method to do so, then it breaks encryption. So it's not whether or not we can or not, it's about whether or not we can do it quickly. Uh, so <clears throat> this is significant, non-determinism is significant. For this class, it helps us create very, very expressive diagrams. Uh, but in the general world of computing, it can possibly help us do some very hard problems a lot quicker. Uh, so, with that, we have proven that NFAs and DFAs are equivalent. Where do we go next? Next up, we are going to introduce the concept of a regular expression. Regular expressions are a little bit different than the programming language construct of regex, but for the most part, they're pretty close. So maybe we could <coughs> introduce some, some concepts that really help you understand the limitations to regular expressions instead of languages. The last thing that I wanna show you, um, oh, by the way, this will end up being where we have to do the same equivalence proofs for regular expressions and DFAs. Uh, so we will get there, absolutely. Um, I did have a question uh, about NFAs from the homework. Now the homework has not been formally assigned yet. It is inside of Moodle, but there's no due date that's been associated with it. And I'm, I'm not prepared to do, do that today. Uh, however, there was a question about whether the number of states and how we use dead states. Uh, and I want to explain that for NFAs, um, let me check this. For NFAs, um, it's all about expressiveness. We get a little bit more lazy, and I've kind of been doing that in class organically, where every step that we take, I get a little bit less rigid with my notation, with the following the rules, making sure that we go around uh, what a complete DFA would be. Things like dead states, making sure every state has two, or, or a transition out for every single one of our characters. For NFAs, we get a little lazy. I'm going to give you an example of this for starts with AA. And this is for the alphabet AB. If I wanted to create a 
and NFA that did this. And I'm, I'm using sort of the shorthand that you would have for an NFA. This is not incredibly different from what you would see with the DFA. If you didn't have shorthand, you would have these dead states. That would show exactly which transitions aren't handled or aren't accepted by the DFA. This is now a DFA, complete DFA. In fact, it was a DFA beforehand. There was no non-determinism present. However, if you want to see an example of where NFAs can be more expressive, one of the questions in your homework, I believe it's one that's where the answer is given in the back of the book, it's a great example of exactly why NFAs are more expressive. It ends with AA, and that's for the alphabet, AB. In this case, we have an initial state, Q0. It loops back to itself for both A and B, but there's a transition out for A, a transition out for another A, and then it accepts with nothing, right? Now this is an NFA right here, but it says just like this, if we start with an A and then we have another A, no matter what, we accept it. And this says, after anything, if we have an AA, then it accepts it. I want you to think about the difference between these two automaton and what that expressiveness gives you. Now, we do know there is an equivalent DFA for this. And in fact, you don't even have to use a construction proof. This is something very close to what you've already done in one of your homeworks. It might be one of our homework problems. However, you would have to account for, okay, if I'm here and I get an A, we loop back. If it's a B, it goes back here. If we get a B here, it goes back here. And yeah, that's the solution, absolutely. We get a B here, we get a B here. If we get an A, it's here. Yeah, okay, we're done. That is not obviously ends with AA. In fact, I might have made a mistake. But this is exactly the thing that, yeah, it's an equivalent DFA, but look how expressive what we had was. There's so much less to digest. It's, okay, any A's and B's, and then we end with an AA and it accepts. No dead states, no nothing. This is sort of when it says three states. Don't worry about dead states. It's, it's a little bit more artistic for NFAs. We're expressing what the language is, and this is an example of exactly why NFAs are more expressive, not necessarily more powerful, but definitely more expressive. And that's all we have for today's lecture.